<clears throat> hey, you are away. Evening, folks. Uh, I'm just a bit on. Yeah, um, I'm a bit unorganized this evening, so I'm, I'm just rushing a little bit. So I'm going to go for a wee wee whilst we wait for people to arrive. I'm just going to nip the toilet. <coughs> I'll be back. realized that I still had my earphones in on the loo so if you could hear me on the toilet then I apologize <coughs> a few people logging in evening folks um, how are we doing happy happy new year uh, <coughs> first live stream of the year it's good to be back it's, um, I'm normally doing like edits and stuff live, but uh, as you can probably see on my screen, um, I have got some a few edits to do um, from the end of last year, but I'm knee deep in the middle of building uh, my new website, so I'm just going to kind of crack on with that in the background, um, and it's just a good old fashioned Q and A. If you've got any questions about the business side of things now is this is a good time of year off season January February I've got no weddings till March so this is a great time of year to work on um, my website my branding generating leads so any kind of questions around that kind of stuff the, the business side generating bookings um, I just thought I'd do a good old-fashioned Q&A chat um, so if you're watching get your questions in if you have any questions to ask Ali media hello evening um, do you have any issues with audio drift? I got this TX650, but the audio drifts in Final Cut. No, I haven't had any of that uh, issues with this, the TX650s. Um, what are your settings? Have you? I've I've put a video up about the settings that I use for the TX650s. Um, that's on my channel. Maybe have a look into the settings you're using. It might be there might be some difference there, but I've never noticed anything. Don't know if anyone else watching can help. Got a few people logging in, which is good. <clears throat> Uh, I use the same settings as you. What do you use to sync the audio? Um, so I just sync in Final Cut. Um, all I do is highlight the, the video clip and the audio clips that I want to use. Right click, create multicam, or generate multicam or whatever it is. Um, and just use the basic built in Final Cut syncing up thing. Um, I know a lot of people use Pluralize to good effect, but I don't. Uh, I just use Final Cut and I find that works fine. I'll try with Plural, yeah. Try it with Pluralize. If, if, uh, but I use Final Cut and I never have any issues. So. Oh, the comments coming in. Hey, buddy. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Louis, uh, currently have nine booked in for next year, plus a full-time job. Yes, mate, well done. That's brilliant. Nine weddings for next year. Next year being 2021, because I'm, I'm still confused as to whether 
20 I keep calling 2020 next year even though it's now this year but I'm uh, but I'm stoked for you mate that's really good um, don't don't take on too much work if you've still got a full-time job be mindful of that uh, unless you're planning on jacking in the full-time job boom there you go this year um, okay <clears throat> cool uh, nine weddings for this year that's brilliant so that's a good a really good starting point I think I did about 12 in my first year and then you can obviously use those going forward to build on and put content and generate more bookings um, excellent and I hope you can manage it all with your full-time job. Uh, good to have you on, dudes. Um, So, uh, all I'm doing tonight is um, working on my new website. I've got a, a brand new... I use a platform called Flow Themes to as a template for my website. Um, and then I just build it the back end myself in WordPress. And I've been... I've spent like three full days on it so far. And I'm determined to get it finished. So, I'm just going to keep plugging away at that and if you've just any questions about the upcoming year booking weddings kit business anything just I'm gonna be here for the next hour or so so get them in keep drinking tea How's the stream looking, by the way? Because I'm just getting a buffering page, even though it says excellent connection. What's the, the connection like? Uh, um, scared to go gimballess at the moment shooting Sony like you. Uh, <laughs> so my first few weddings, I lived on the gimbal because I thought that that's what I had to do. I thought that's what people wanted, but it's so free. And when you come away from it, um, I don't don't get me wrong, a gimbal can make for a great shot, but other than faffing around getting one gimbal shot, I could probably get like six to eight shots held in the time that it takes months to set, set up a gimbal so <clears throat> um do it man do it you won't regret it uh, and make sure you've got a uh I, I know you're shooting on sony but make sure you've got a good lens so that you can either on a monopod which is stable enough anyway or if you're going to go handheld make sure you've got a good lens that allows you to because like on the 55 with this a7s2 the uh, the Zeiss 55 I can shoot on held and never, I never really worry about stabilization. It's so good. Um, is it hard to do SEO with building a new site? Good question. So, my obviously my website is. Um, I spent a lot of time on my SEO on my website and ranking for certain phrases, and I've, I, I would say that my, my website was quite well SEO'd um, and now that I'm working on a new one I don't know if it's, that's going to have an effect on it. I'm keeping the copy more or less the same, it's going to the same URL so that shouldn't have too much impact like if it's going to the same URL and I'm keeping the copy the same it should, shouldn't should impact my SEO too much and to be honest on the topic of SEO um, Obviously, 
having the, the right copy and text and fr using you know that key phrase in your website plenty of times that's good for SEO Google sees you know wedding videographer as a phrase and ranks it accordingly but the best thing that you can have for SEO is clicks through to your website and backlinks to other respectable websites so other websites with good presence um, so the very best thing that you can do is have people clicking through to your website so um, a tip that I do for this is when I send the couples their video, their film, I always, rather than sending them a Vimeo link, a YouTube link, I embed it straight into the website. So as soon as they're getting their film, it's a link to my site. They're sending that to their friends, their family, and they're all clicking through to my website. So that's clicks, like dozens and dozens of clicks through to my site every time I send a film off. And then if you can get in with the suppliers and get on their websites as recommendations and it all back links to you or on awards or blogs or directories anyone with a good web presence if you can get a backlink to your site I had a there's a, uh, a mag magazine publication in the UK here well it's worldwide isn't it hello magazine an okay magazine um, I think they're pretty well known internationally but I got a link off their website now their website's huge so that tells Google that oh, if, if a big website like that is rec is linking and recommending Adam's website, then it must be good and Google prefers that. So don't worry too much about your copy. Um, it's not the holy grail when it comes to SEO and backlinks are king and click through to your sites are king and, 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 and copy is important as well. But as long as you're not changing URLs and anything too major, I'm hoping it'll be okay. But I'm not. I'm no SEO expert. Um, what's the most back-to-back -back weddings you've done? I shot five. Did I shoot five? It was. It was. I've definitely done four. Like one after the other, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I remember doing that. Did I do five? I, I, the, there might have been a, an occasion where I did five, um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember the four weekend, and on day three, I started kind of feeling a bit tired, um, but by day four, I just kind of, I think I just went a bit delirious, and a bit kind of do-lally. And I was, I was all right. Um, I think it was day three that I got really tired, and then by day four, I think I was just in some sort of trance state where I just felt a bit airheaded, and I got through it. It was all right. The the main thing with back to back weddings is charging up your camera and backing up your footage and um, charging your batteries and stuff the night you get home because you've got to get home from that wedding. You're tired. You've still got to back up, and you've got to charge your batteries ready to go for the next morning um, so having the batteries and SD card spare so that you don't have to spend hours charging up your batteries at night that helps uh, any tips on how to handle it there you go um, if you can have three day Asian wedding this summer yeah just um, obviously shoot the wedding as normal and then uh, keep hydrated throughout the day, keep your energy levels up, sugar levels, keep hydrated um, to stave off because what you can, what I tend to do is forget to drink and then you get dehydrated and then the next day you wake up with a headache and you're tired and you almost feel like you've got a hangover because you've not drank enough. Um, so make sure you stay hydrated and get a system in place so that as soon as you get home from that wedding you can You've got loads of spare batteries ready charged that you can swap out and you don't have to sit up all night charging your batteries that you've used that day. I have like um, a system where you can just stick two or three cards in at once, get them backed up. What I normally do is stick my cards in, start backing them up um, and then get showered, get ready for the day after. And then hopefully the cards don't take too long. It's the batteries charging that takes the time. So... Um, if you can have loads of spares, that certainly helps. Mm -mm. Happy New Year, Evalio. Eval 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 
really sorry to pronounce that wrong. Um, but happy new year to you. Hope you're well. Uh, three questions. One, you use the same mic as the Sony, but when I put the mic in the groom or the best man, I hear some echo. Uh, when I put the mic in the groom or the best manner, here's some echo. When I stick the recorder in the big, I can't see the rest of your question. Um, is that my, I, it's not showing me the rest of your question for some reason. Is that my screen? That's causing that. Put the mic in. I've never had any echo. Maybe a bit of rustling if you're putting it in the pocket. Um, shouldn't have any echo. Again, it might depend on the settings that you're using. I'd uh, maybe a, a Valio Caracolo. Caracolo. I'm sorry, I've pronounced it wrong. I know I have. <clears throat> maybe message me on that one, um, and I'll try and help as best I can. Um, got the full Adam Wing kit me out of the fifty five and the monofog. Good man. Uh, I hope it works well for you. It's a combo that I really enjoy using. Um, what's your process for getting couples booked once they inquire? Have you found a process that works best? Yellow Glove Productions. I love this question. Um, so the, the the biggest thing that's worked for me and the thing that I advocate to um, anyone that has mentoring sessions with me or any you know anyone that asks this question um, the, the the most important thing once you get an inquiry is um, the initial obviously the, in the initial reply <clears throat> because I don't have prices on my website so they don't even know my price when they inquire um, but that initial reply for me is really important um, and I always tell them a little bit in that re first reply to an inquiry a couple of things that you have to do um, obviously let them know if you're free on the date because if you're not you just say well I'm not free and send them somewhere else um, but if you're free I then so oh my god yeah I'm free it's a, I'd love to do your wedding it sounds great and if you've if you've worked at that venue before or you've worked at that place before you can be like oh, I love that venue I love I love that working with that um, I love the ground at this venue something to try and personalize their inquiry to you know if they say we're getting married in Manchester, I might go back with, great, I'm available. I love that venue. I, you know, the, there's some nice shots in the city for nice spots for portraits and just try and personalize it a little bit. Then I explain to them the style and how I'm discreet and I'll blend in and da 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 and I'll film all, you know, I film in this sort of way and I'll film with this minimal equipment. And then I tell them my starting price and I say the price is at this much. But at this stage, the best thing that we can do is um, have a chat on the phone or a meeting or something like that. So if you if you're free, um, you know if 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 you'd like to chat further further, it would be great to get you on the phone so I can explain a little bit more about the and that first email for me. Obviously, I tell them my starting price so they've got something to go on. I tell them a bit about the style and hopefully try to start getting them buying into me. Um, but I want to get them on them on the phone or in a meeting so that I can really get them to buy into me because the thing that I find is that <coughs> people book people um, and I, I think if I was just replying with hey I'm available here's my price list and you give them the full shebang on one email they're just gonna look at it and go okay and then they're gonna go somewhere else and try someone else 
um, people by people. If you can kind of ask some questions about their wedding or show a, show them a film at the same venue or kind of get a conversation going and, and tell them you start in price, but but then get them on the phone and then you, then you get chatting to them and you're like, so how's the planning going? Or who, who have you got doing this? Have you? Oh yeah, that they're great. That supplier's brilliant. Or I can recommend a makeup artist if you need that. And you get chatting to them and you kind of explain a little bit about your style and you say, no, I blend in. No one will even know I'm videoing. Da, da, da. Try and make them laugh. Get them to buy into you. And then, <clears throat> and then you go, oh well, I've got this film that I did at the, this place and it sounds like a similar, like it sounds very similar to your day. So let me send it you and see what you think and get just get a bit of a rapport going and then. They buy into you then, and they, they want they, they start to envision having you there at their wedding, um, and that starts to outweigh the budget logic. Kind of, we've only got this much to spend. Oh, but Adam was so great, you know. Maybe we can stretch the budget a bit. <coughs> Those kind of things, um, I think, are, are massive in setting you apart from anyone else that they might be inquiring with, and yeah, it certainly helped me convert a lot more but even even that I, I probably only convert one in eight one in nine inquiries um, which is partly to do my pricing but I get a lot of inquiries so that's still pretty good numbers so I'm not too concerned about that um, especially like in January the inquiries are flooding in because January is the time when everyone starts planning the wedding and I'm getting loads of inquiries at the minute it's brilliant so you've really got to be on your social medias, creating content, promoting yourself at this time of year and capitalising on the fact that a lot of people are starting to plan their wedding and you're going to be getting loads of inquiries. So now's the time to test out different replies, different responses, uh, different prices maybe. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, thanks for the great answer. You're welcome. I'm so, I, that was a very big answer. I'm sorry for waffling. <laughs> what percentage of your couples do you meet before the wedding day? I've kind of just kind of just answered that one. I try to meet everyone uh, at least once. It doesn't always happen if and especially I know if you're in the states mate um and they're all over America then you're not going to be able to but I would still class like a FaceTime or a Skype. I would class that as a meeting. Um so I do try and get in with most couples at least once before the wedding. If not when they first book, then nearer the time, about a month before, to go over all the details and things like that. Um, but I, it doesn't always happen. I would say three quarters of my couples I get to meet before the day, and that what a difference that makes. If I've met them before the day, and then we when I turn up on the morning, it makes such a difference compared to if I've not met them. So that, this is why I like to as much as possible. Um, but it doesn't always come off because they might be miles away and you know busy people <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm busy but I, I think it's worth it's well worth the time to meet them um, what batteries do you use for your Sony or third party yeah right Ali Ali Media bear with um, and anyone else that's watching uh, I've got some somewhere so I use third party batteries loads. Um, I found some on Amazon. They are linked on my on my YouTube videos in the like the description links somewhere. Um, but they're called new mower uh, batteries um, on Amazon. They're about fifteen pounds. You get two of these <coughs> and a little two slot charger thing that comes with it so for 15 pounds you get two batteries and a charger and they work just as well as the Sony batteries I think they're great I've still got I've still got like the original Sony batteries that came with my cameras and um, but these are about 50 60 pounds per battery and these are 15 for two with a charger so I think they're great and I have, I've got a pouch full of batteries. I take about 10 batteries with me to every wedding. Um, since using the 55, have you had any trouble getting tight shots? 
Seems a bit wide for ceremony and FaceTime stuff. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, obviously, the 85 is known as the portrait lens. Um, and the 55, what I have found with the 55 is that it's not quite as nice for details and, you know, face shots if you're just wanting to get, like, hands or face on the makeup and stuff. Um, but in most cases, I can just move closer. Um, it's not always possible, but I can. Um, and it, you, sometimes you do miss that kind of nice portraitness of the 85. But, like, if it's hair and makeup in the morning I'm, or I want to get people's faces or the couple's face during the portrait session or like a close-up i'll just move closer um, and in the ceremony i'm not too fussed about being close i'd rather be a bit wider anyway um it always seems to work uh, for the ceremony i like to get them from the waist up um so like you can see their entire upper body um anything less than that is a bit tight and a bit of a nightmare um, so anything more is kind of like, that's cool, that's bonus. <clears throat> just getting my kit there. I've, just, I've got a, um, the next video that I'm putting on the channel is an updated um, what's in my kit bag kind of video. So I've got, I've got that coming at some point in the next few days. Um, so I'm going to show you guys all the latest stuff that I've got in my kit bag. <clears throat> so um, those batteries and any, and everything else that I use, my latest stuff that I'm rocking for this year's wedding season, is going to be outlined in the uh, video that I've got coming. Excuse me. <clears throat> Amazing Steve, hello. Did you ever do wedding fairs to get bookings when you started? Yeah, um, I remember my first wedding fair was in the Lake District and I spoke to, I booked two weddings from it. I didn't book them there and then at the wedding fair. I've got a picture of my stand. It was awful. I had a terrible shoddy little setup to display my stuff. Um, I had a canvas printed with a picture from my mum's, my mum had got married recently at the, at the time. My mum had got married not long before I did that wedding fair and I used her photographer's picture of her wedding on a canvas to, sh to, to pretend that it was a wedding I'd shot. <coughs> um, and I booked two weddings from that, not on the day, but afterwards. Um, and yeah, one of, the, one of which I only filmed not so long ago. Um, they booked like three years in advance, isn't it ridiculous? Um, but they both turned out to be really good. and. I think that's the most I've ever booked for my wedding fair. I was at a wedding fair last week. Right, so I'm, I'm, I digress. To answer your question, yes, I did wedding fairs at the start. Um, no, the point I was going to make is that's the only wedding fair that I ever paid for um, because after that, I started getting invited to venue open days and they were just inviting me for free um, or in exchange for doing a little bit of a video of the wedding fair. So I'd be like, well, I'll if you have me for the for the to set up a stand for the wedding fair then I'll do you a little video and it was a swapsy deal rather than having to pay for the fair um I still do them now so I was at one last weekend with a venue that I know that just invite me and I just turn up set up a stand chat to loads of couples um and it was good I chatted to I reckon five or six couples where I had like deep chats where they seemed interested We'll see. I don't get much from wedding fairs these days. Um, I don't know if that's whether I'm too high of a price for the sort of people that might be looking at fairs. I don't know. Um, or when they shop around, maybe to find someone a bit more in budget. I don't know. Um, but I still like doing them. I still enjoy them. I'm, I'm at one tomorrow um, for another venue who I'm doing a bit of a promo video for, and it's just an informal kind of set up a stand job. So yeah, fairs are great. They're good. Um, as long as you're not, I don't. I wouldn't want to pay for them. If if someone asked me to do one and they want to want me to pay for it, I don't need that kind of marketing anymore. Uh, do you outsource any of your editing? If yes, how do you manage the quality? Ooh. Good question. Um, do you outsource your editing? Good question. So I 
I do. I have an editor, um, so I outsource internally. I would say um, I have an editor who um, I've trained up in sort of my style, um, who is local to me, who I can keep an eye on and kind of manage and. Uh, well, at least at the start, but now they've been working for me for that long that um, <clears throat> we're in sync and they know my style inside out and they basically I trained them up from scratch so they only ever knew my style. Um, but um, I don't really worry about kind of letting go control of the creative side anymore because I know and trust my editor inside and out and I know that they will produce what I want um, but so <clears throat> some of you might be sitting there going oh my what you have an editor you don't do your own editing um, so what my editor does what I outsource is the the prep stages um, so basically my editor I give all the footage from the wedding they create a final cut library they cut the multicams of the ceremony and the speeches and the first dance if 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 I'm, if I'm doing a multicam of the first dance for that particular wedding. Um, so they cut all the multicams and then they skim through all the footage, taking out the five, six second clips, lay them all out into a timeline, get the the film timeline sort of prepped up with all the little snippet, all the B-roll clips that I want. So they take all the raw footage and trim it into the three or four second clips that I'll need. And then they just dump it all into a timeline and they finish the multicams, the ceremony and speeches, do all that for me so that when I come to take over that library, I can just get straight into building the film. Um, so I have someone doing that for me and it saves me maybe like half a day per wedding. So it's, it, it works out great. Um, and it, on that kind of front, like the multicams, there's not a massive deal, um, a massive amount of creativity to those. So I don't feel like I'm letting go control of the creative side and it doesn't you know but the person that does it for me has been doing it for me that long that it's you know I trust them implicitly amazing Steve cheers Blackburn lads yes mate uh, living in Ireland cool um, so are you a football fan Steve I am a uh, I'm from Blackpool but I'm uh, Blackburn Rovers fan. My family were my grandma's born and bred Blackburn. Spent many, many a weekend down heading down the Manxman to the football ground. Um, <laughs> Rovers. Uh, oh. What the Rovers? What is more important? For you, your website, Instagram or website, what gives you more clients? Um, Instagram or website, what gives you more clients? Interesting. I get, I'm, I, I get more in the last year. I would say that Instagram has come on loads in terms of people looking for weddings and inquiries. And no, it doesn't trump like a lot of people that find me. And a lot of the inquiries that I get are still coming through my website and they're still saying we find you on Google um, or, you know, photographer recommendation or whatever. They're coming straight through my website. Um, but Instagram has come on loads. It's taken over Facebook for inquiries and it's it. the answers do both, obviously. I mean, you've got a website anyway. Obviously, you're going to get inquiries through your website but be pushing Instagram all the time for sure uh, because it is a good avenue. Um, I booked a nice destination wedding in France um, just recently through an Instagram inquiry. Just have a quick look at this uh, website stuff that I've not done anything on since I got chatting. Loving all these questions though guys, I'm, I'm really glad there's, there's some good questions coming in. Um, thanks a lot for being really helpful. Do you shoot with letterboxing in mind or do you recompose later in post? Uh, Michael, hello. Um, I do shoot with letterboxing in mind. I have um, the little guidelines on my camera 
Um, so there's a there's a setting where it sets like white bars kind of here and here on your camera so it tells you what will still be in frame after you've put the letterboxing on. Um, so I I frame up my shot using that. Uh, hold on, I've got my camera to hand. Bear with. I'll try and find the setting. I think it's just called grid markers or something. Uh, well, this is this is if you are shooting on Sony, by the way. Um, I don't know about other cameras if they have this, but grid, uh, not grid lines, marker display. Um, so there's in the second tab, the the settings tab, the first page of that has. Um, if you can see that uh, marker display, I have that on, um, and then when I hit record, it brings up these lines. See those? Uh, so that tells me what's in frame. <clears throat> uh, great answer, thanks for replying. Um, you're welcome. Great answer. Da, da, da. Uh, Rovers, ta, ta. do you ever struggle to, fi to do you ever struggle to finish a particular edit? What motivates you to get it done? All the time. So <clears throat> I have. I don't know if anyone else has this, but um, I suppose like any creative industry, um, you you get kind of writer's block or blanks or whatever. Um, a lot of kind of my my brain comes alive at like eleven o'clock at night. I get a lot of if I'm halfway through an edit or something, I'll have an I, all my good ideas come at stupid o'clock at night when I'm about to go to bed um, and in the past I'd be like oh that's really good I'd come alive and I'd hit my desk and I'd sit there till three in the morning because I had to get it out there and then um, I've gotten a bit better at that in recent times and I'll just kind of make make a voice memo and work on it the next morning um, but so I, I did my friend's wedding in August and uh, I was it was a friend of mine. I was a guest at the wedding, but I did the I did the video. I got roped into it. Um, I offered to do it, and when it came to editing it, um, I was a little bit squiffy throughout the day. A little, I was a bit merry, so my footage wasn't. I what didn't get my full attention the filming because I was enjoying myself a bit too much. Um, so <clears throat> didn't have quite as much footage as I may have done if I'd have been completely sober. Um, so when it came to editing it, I was, for whatever reason, I was like, I don't know how to, and maybe because it meant more, because it was my friend, and I was like, I don't, I don't know how to start this. And I was I was just staring at the screen for like an hour. And then I went to the toilet, I just turned the computer off. So this is this is my advice to you if you're struggling, just, just turn the computer off, come away. I normally, if I've got, I do an hour or two of editing, and when my brain starts to melt, I'll turn it off and go and walk the dogs and get some fresh air in, in the woods. Take them down the so and get yeah, that's nice. Uh, and it just kind of clears your mind. But um, so I turned the computer off, and then I was sat on the toilet like half an hour later. And I had in my office, I had music bed playing through just a playlist of of new tracks that I that I favorited on music bed. Um, so I sat listening to music bed tracks in the background, just trying to find some stuff. And I went to the toilet, <coughs> so, and it carried on playing, and I could hear it from the bathroom. <laughs> and um, a song started playing through music bed, and for whatever reason, I honed in on it. And as I was sat on the loo, this idea just dropped into my head from somewhere. The universe gave me this idea, and as I heard the song, and I pictured my mate's wedding video. And the hot like, the whole film just came together in like thirty seconds. So I shut off the toilet, <laughs> got over my, and I, I knocked the edit out in about an hour and a half of like a five minute film. It all just fell into my head. It's so weird. Um, but yeah, I think if you're struggling with an edit, obviously come away from it, take breaks. Um, but sometimes it can be good just to 
maybe watch it through from the start or or skip a little bit you know if you're stuck on a particular bit skip to the next segment of the day like the night do and start cutting down that or fresh for a fresh pair of eyes and a fresh mindset is is the main thing i think coming away and having time away from it which sounds like a big ask in the middle of wedding season when you got a lot of editing to do and you don't really have time to come away but you've got to you've got to make it you know <clears throat> joe anthony your films are fire thanks mate what frame rates do you shoot in throughout the day i shoot at 50 frame excuse me 50 frames per second throughout the day um because that gives me the option to slow-mo any given shot by 50% if I want to. Um, I don't, I often don't, but uh, I shoot at 50 anyway. Uh, and obviously that doesn't, moviegoers might say that that doesn't, you shoot at a higher frame rate, you know, it kind of, you don't have that motion blur and it's not as nice, but I've never had a couple that have said, oh, there's no motion blur in my video, you know, they don't see that, so I think that's just something that us film kind of geeks worry about. So, I shoot at 50. Uh, do you feel your work would suffer if you had to downgrade to the Sony A6500? I believe they're really good cameras, the A6500s. Um, I, I, someone asked me about them the other day, and I've not used them personally, but my, I've got a friend that does, and he he raves about it it's a good kind of c cam um or you know third camera backup angle um would my work suffer have had to downgrade i don't think so the quality of the image might not be as great um and i probably wouldn't go handheld all day like i do on the a7s 2s i'd just revert to a monopod but i still think my composition would be there my framing would be there my edit would be there, so I don't think it would suffer. No. Do you get music ready before you shoot your wedding? Uh, no, Cody, I don't. Um, mm, there's, I, I, I spend off. I often spend time going through um, music bed and just listening. Like if I've got a long drive, I'll listen to music bed for an hour and just find tracks that I like to use because I, I use music bed for a lot of my stuff. Um, and I'll find tracks that I like to use and just favourite them. So I do have a, a backlist of of songs. Um, and sometimes I go to a wedding and halfway through the day I'm like, oh, that's the song I'm going to use for these guys. Um, but very rarely do I choose the music before the wedding. I think you need to... Uh, you need to go to the wedding and kind of get a feel for that couple and the... And a, the, not just the couple, because you might have met them before, but the the couple on their wedding day. And, you know, sometimes I meet really fun-loving couples who are really excited. Actually, when you get to the wedding day, there was actually all these tender, nice, emotional moments that you weren't expecting, and that can kind of curveball your, your edit. Um, but I don't think you can choose music without living through the atmosphere of the day first um do you still deliver physical media is everything online the trend seems to be everyone moving online but in that case you think value perception suffers uh, another good question <laughs> i deliver everything online i have the option it's an optional extra for people to buy a usb stick off me and if they do i still package it up in a nice box and a presentation and send it off to them and that's a nice thing but um, as standard, it's an online delivery. Um, so I, I used to use MediaZilla. I still do use MediaZilla, but there's a there's a service that's coming up in the UK called EasyFlix. Um, it's by a, it's been made locally as well in the northwest by a guy called John um, John Bird, who's started EasyFlix, and I've been trialing that out recently, and. It's going really well so far. It's it's nice. Um, 
So I think I'm going to do like an in-depth review of the platform um, as a YouTube video, but um, I'm liking it so far. And I'm potentially going to, I'm, I'm probably going to move over to, to, the, to Easy Flicks from MediaZilla, but it's like you know, I deliver online, an online platform. Um, And yeah, I think everyone's moving over to that. But what you can do in a like say in a world where everyone's moving to online delivery, you could stand out by offering not just physical delivery, but a really nice package, like a really nice like I say when I do a USB stick, I'll put it in a nice box and I'll tie it in ribbons and sprinkle it in glitter and like I mean I don't but you know, metaphorically. All that kind of nice stuff. Um, include like some champagne and some nice chocolate truffles and spray it with scents of lavender and a really nice, classy, sexy looking package. Um, when you send that to a couple and they post it on Instagram, that could make you stand apart from someone else who's just delivering online. Something to think about. Um, you know, as the case in point, the case, the example that everyone uses is Apple. I love getting stuff from Apple because the packaging is just so, the unboxing experience of an Apple product is so nice and satisfying. So there's something to be said for physical delivery. Um, when it comes to, ex <coughs> to exposure, do you like to expose on the dark side like that? What settings for exposure do you prefer to film with? Uh, Robert, so um, my pitch profile, the blacks on my pitch profile are set to about minus 12. If that's what you mean, I think it is. Um, but for exposure, um, I just, I have it on the... The exposure dial thing, the, the plus the thing that goes like up to three and minus three, I just have that at zero and um, I just tend to overexpose, because I, I expo expose manually um, and I tend to expose for highlights and slightly underexpose in camera and then pitch profile one with the blacks crushed to like minus 12 like you say and then graded slightly under as I, I like my stuff slightly like kind of dark and contrasty and so yeah. Um have you ever considered or even tried using more camera movements in your handheld shooting? Um Harry, so hello. Um I do move about handheld. I'll sometimes do a slight panning thing or a or a back to front if I feel the occasion calls for it. What I do what I always kind of shoot moving handheld is the confetti shot. So I'll be like coming back with the, the couple are moving through like a, 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 a the line, the con, con, professional light, congressional. Con, when they do the confetti line, I'll move back with them. So, and I just try and keep as steady as I can. And, um, and that always ends up, or it sometimes ends up being a bit wavy, but that's kind of cool, and you're kind of moving with them. Um, so yeah, do a bit of movement. Uh, I'm gonna say, and then obviously like tracking people. If someone's kind of running across the across the garden, I'll kind of track them. So yeah, do a bit of movement. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't go to the extent of like doing like a kind of gimbal move whilst being handheld, I don't think that would work smoothly enough. How do you hang, handle the long film edit for a wedding without any sort of speeches? Hey Alex, I um, so the, my long film edits are 15 to 20 minutes um, and I've sometimes the, the speeches aren't great. I've never done a wedding without speeches. Um, hold on, I'll tell a lie, I've never done a a long film that's not had any speeches at you know I've done weddings where they've not done speeches but they've only has, asked for short films I've never done a long film with no audio to use um, 
And in the case where the speeches just aren't that great, you've always got the vows, you've always got the ring exchange, you've got the registrar, who is normally, or the, you know, the celebrant, the person giving, conducting the ceremony, they're normally saying something nice about love or about the couple, or you could mic them up and use bits of that. Um, and then in in the cases where the audio is lacking a bit, then just Foley audio or background audio, ambience, people chattering. Um, I've seen people use um, the monologues that they found online, for example, Alan, uh, Alan Watts, Alan Watts. who's like an, an orator, who's kind of monologues you can find on YouTube where he talks about love and things. I've, I've seen people use those before. Um, you, you're probably going to have a reading and a ceremony. So you don't need speeches, speeches, but um, yeah, I think this, there was going to be no audio for a long film whatsoever. I'd use as much Foley audio as possible and as much ambient audio as possible of like the guest, guests chatting and stuff. Shoot my first wedding this weekend. What advice would you give for having one camera and two Tascams? <coughs> Excuse me, put the camera on. Um, okay, so if you're only shooting on one camera, um, first of all, don't worry too much. You'll be, you'll be golden. Um, I shoot, aside from the ceremony and the speeches, I only use one camera all day. So you can you'll be able to put together a good wedding film with just one camera um i mean good, good luck and enjoy it for starters it's your first wedding just enjoy it be as prepared as you can shoot as overshoot like shoot as much as possible um and enjoy it and know that you can edit the highlight film or the short film with one camera no problem and it'll look great the only thing that you can't really deliver that well or comprehensively with one camera is your multicam ceremony or your multicam speeches um so what i would do with just one camera i would when the speeches come around i would stick your camera on a tripod find a kind of safe-ish shot of the top table and just hit record and leave it running for the entirety of the speeches and the same for the ceremony where you can obviously in the ceremony you need to kind of move about but a little bit more but maybe time your movements cleverly so that you move in in between hymns or something like that that you can kind of cut out of the edit um, and just film as much of the ceremony as you can leave it just hit record and leave it running through for, for like the, the full half hour period before your camera cuts off and you have to record again um, and just move as minimally as possible what do you say when someone asks for discount? Military or I've had the military discount before. Um, when someone asks for discount, it depends on the date, it depends on the location, it depends on the person inquiring. Um, if it's you know the brother of a bride that I've done before, and he wants a discount, I might consider it because you know I did his, his wedding a bit cheaper. Right? Um, and again, like location, if it's nearby, I might consider the discount. If it's midweek, if it's a Thursday, if it's in February and I've got nothing else on, I might consider doing a bit of discount. Um, but generally speaking, before I offer any discount, I would go back and say, you know, I can I can offer, say your package is like £2,000. And they want, they're like, well, what discount can you do us? Um, I would just say, well, I can't offer you any discount, but what I can include is this at no extra cost. So rather than discounting your service straight away, just add something on that's free. Um, for example, drone footage or an extra hour's coverage in the evening. You could stay an extra hour later or um, you could do them like an extra edit. You could do them a an Instagram teaser for no extra cost or something like that. Um, offer them something extra rather than dropping your price. And see what they say to that because a lot of the time people just ask for discount for the sake of asking. You know. 
it's like when if I was to buy a car or I was hiring a plumber or something like that can I afford their quote yeah am I gonna ask for a discount just to see what I can get yeah it's no different people just ask just to see what they can get so if you can offer them something rather than dropping your price straight away you're not devaluing yourself you're still getting the same amount of money you just kind of go in a bit extra mile and it, you know it can be something that like an Instagram teaser takes you like an hour to do and that's good content for you anyway um, easy flick sounds interesting yeah look out so look out for an easy flick Shahid and look out for my review of easy flicks um, it's it it's a service it's live now on Google uh, you can you can you'll be able to Google it it's it's a, a video and photo delivery platform that you can check out now but I'm gonna do a kind of I've been working through it and I'm enjoying it it's good <coughs> um, love first hello mate good to see you um, in your opinion is there any other audio device that is cheaper than the Sony TX650 and good enough is two TX650 is good enough for a wedding day. There is cheaper audio recorders than the TX650, yes. Are they good enough? I don't know, probably not. Um, the TX650s are pretty good. Um, they're not, the TX650s aren't the best in terms of audio quality. Um, they're pretty good and the convenient as hell so it's a good balance um, but and they're like 80 90 pounds um, in the UK so they're on the cheaper side of, of a good audio recorder I wouldn't be spending any less and expecting as good a quality uh, but you, there's um I've known or See, known of people that have used like a voice memo app on the phone so you could and, and just plug a lav mic into your phone um, I've not tried it myself but I've heard of people that have just plugged a lav mic into their phone set up a little voice recording app on the phone and, and stuck stuck your phone you, then you stick your phone in the groom's pocket and lav mic him up I don't know how well that works I've not tried it but that's a cheap alternative I guess <clears throat> um, but yeah, two two TX six fifties good enough for a wedding day. Um, hopefully, possibly you can get away with three. I did for a while because um, you're gonna like ceremony. You're gonna want one for the groom, and that'll pick up the groom and the bride. And then you're gonna want one for readings or any readings going on. Um, so there's there's your two. But then if someone else comes up to give a reading. You're gonna need a third. So it can be done. You could get them to swap. You know, if you liaise with the two people doing a reading, you could be like, "Well, you you take it up and pass it to this person once you've done." And you could get away with it. Um, and then for the speeches, generally you've got a father of the bride, groom, and a best man. You've got three uh, speeches. But hopefully, the venue have got a microphone, or you could provide your own mic microphone recorder to the microphone and they use that and then you only need one recorder in that case um, so you probably can get away with two in in a lot of cases but you're not allowing for backups you're not allowing for anyone else getting up to do an extra reading or an extra speech um, so I would I, I have six um, I take six with me um, which is plenty but any less than three or four nowadays, I would be a bit feel a bit panicky about. Um, but you can probably get by with a bit of careful planning. Um, many thanks. Thanks for the advice. Keep doing good things. Peter Lawson, hello. Hi, mate. Uh, Happy New Year to you, Pete. After seeing you on the stream. <clears throat> I've never had this before. This is my uh, my MacBook charger. 
uh, the battery pack, it's it's that hot that it's overheated and isn't charging my laptop anymore. It's red hot. It's just the the it just stopped charging. I'm guessing it's because it's so hot. Never had that before. Uh, happy New Year, Happy New Year, Pete. Um, we need to hang out soon, love. Have you shot any other films than wedding films? It would be great to see you shoot and edit a travel film. Wow, thank you. Um, I have. I I go skiing every year. I go snowboarding every year. So I do little. I wouldn't call them travel films. I do. I I've done the occasional vlog of my ski holidays, um, and I've done a couple of like just personal stuff and holiday videos and things like that um, and I've done the I, I used to do the occasional bit of corporate work but other than that no just wedding films um, I like doing my, my snowboard videos but um, and I like watching travel films uh, but the thing is they're so good I'm just like and the the trouble I have with going away like for going holiday or go traveling or whatever um, I just loathe to because I'm on holiday I just want to relax and enjoy it and cameras kind of feel like work now because it's that's what I'm you so you know when I go away I don't want to be seeing everything through my camera so it kind of puts me off doing it um, and then every time I come home and regret it and think oh it would have been cool to do something but um, I'm afraid it's just wedding films um, for now but maybe in the future Harry maybe 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 before you start editing your wedding film, do you pick the music and edit that first, then do the edit of the actual clips or the other way around? Uh, before you start your editing your wedding film, do you pick the music and edit that first? Ye yes. So. Uh, so yeah, so I think yeah, I do the music first. So what I do is I have all the clips laid out in the timeline. I choose the audio from like the ceremony and from the speeches and the the audio chunks that I'm that I want to use. I, I pick them first. Then I pick the tracks, and then I kind of couple the track up with the audio bit. So like say it's a Father of the Bride speech and I'm using a bit of the Father of the Bride speech, I'll couple that up with a song and have the song kind of dipping in and out at the right bits to fit in with the dad's speech. Then I'll put the clips over that, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, I, I, I align the music and the audio first and then put the clips in afterwards. So the clips go in last, yeah. <clears throat> have you ever had someone not like something in the contract and request an edit if so what do you say slash do um, have you ever had someone not like something in the contract yeah so I had a lawyer client, a groom with a lawyer who read my contract and then sent it back with the changes that he'd made to it <laughs> and then asked me to agree to those changes um, which was quite handy really because being a lawyer he was like right you've done this he, he picked my my um, contract apart and was like this, you've done that wrong you need to change this word in and da, da, da. and he changed it all and was like we'll book you if you agree to all my changes <laughs> um, so yeah, I've had I've had people occasionally. So in my contract, there's things like um, I have permission and rights to use all promotional materials. Like I'm not, I you you have to consent to let me promote your wedding video on my website and stuff. And occasionally, couples come back and say, "Oh, actually, we'd rather you don't share our wedding video. We just want it to be private." I know it's in your contract, but is there any way you? we can have it private and you not share it to which I just say of course ignore the contracts like I'll, ch I'll change it 
I respect your privacy. Da, da, da. Um, I'm not going to enforce my contract if it's making the bridal groom uncomfortable. Um, you know, the customer is king <coughs> at the end of the day, and I want to make them happy over kind of being able to share the film. You know, if I can't share the film, I can't share the film, so that makes them happy. Um, so that's probably the most common one. Uh, and then occasionally, because I have something in my contract about having somewhere to park and unload at weddings, so sometimes they're like, oh, we've seen that bit in your contract about parking and we better, well, we're not sure we can guarantee you a parking space. Again, to which I go, yeah, don't worry about it, ignore that. Um, so the, the contract stuff is in there a lot of the time for just worst case scenarios. And well, extreme cases where, you know, I need, but it's not very often that I enforce it. Well, it, I never enforce it. Uh, if you reuse music in any of your films, do you relicense them, uh, Michael? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you do. For music bed and things like that, you do have to relicense tracks every time that you use them officially. Um, I actually have a bank of songs that I've collected over the years that um, I can use license free, so I try to use them where I can because that saves a bit of money. But I guess the cheapest thing you can do is get the music bed monthly subscription thing and just use it over and over and over, and then you can use whatever because you're paying it monthly. <clears throat> it's a bit pricey the music bed one, but. Um, it's worth it, I think. Artlist is good, I think, and Soundstripe, and there's some that are like ten, fifteen pound a month, um, and then you don't have to worry about. It. You can just use the songs indefinitely. Then, um, how many batteries do you use on a normal wedding day? Uh, Love first. I go through about ten Sony batteries. Well, but no, t that's a lie. I take ten Sony batteries with me every wedding day. Um, I probably go through about six or seven of them in total um, but I always make sure I've got a couple spare obviously so I, I normally have about 10 to 12 with me in my bag and I'll probably blast through six seven eight of them hey Adam how do you break up one wedding video into multiple Instagram posts Jose um, just so if you've got one wedding film that's like a five minute film you could take a, a a clip from it you know just the confetti shot and put that on instagram you could take a 30 second snippet of the morning part of that film and put that on instagram just just take little snippets out you, you only need like maybe five if you've got a five minute film you could take five 10 second snippets from that film post them on instagram you could take a few you know another five to ten screenshots of the film and put those on instagram and just stagger them out over time there's no mad science to it just whichever bits you think are nice like the confetti shot or maybe a a portrait shot or two um so you can the night do people dancing get like 10 15 seconds of people dancing use that as a post just I wouldn't worry too much about the quality of the content just get the content out there have you considered upgrading to the a7 III um no I've not uh, well I ha people have tried to tell me how good they are and I'm sure they are um, well they are good they are they're, they're brilliant I'm sure but I like the a7s too um, and I don't feel the need to be honest. The A7S II does until 4K becomes the norm, and the A7S II shoots 4K anyway. Um, until it becomes the norm, and there's a camera that does 4K 60 frames per second, the next camera that they bring out, and it becomes more of a normal thing that everyone expects. I can't see myself needing to upgrade. Like the Sony A7S II does everything I need it to. So I don't see the point in 
I, and I don't think that the A7 III is necessarily an upgrade, it's more like a, a sideward grade. It's a left grade, not an upgrade. Um, yeah. But I'm, you know, I don't get too hung up on kit, really. Do you always shoot wedding videos wide open in terms of aperture? How do you focus so well when the bride is walking down? <coughs> cool, right, um, last question, guys, because I'm going to shoot off in a minute. Um, so I'll just answer this one. Do you uh, always shoot wedding videos wide open in terms of aperture? Yes. I always have my aperture at 1.8. Apart from the B cam for the ceremony and the speeches, which I put at 5.6 because that's my static that I could just kind of leave safe at 5.6 just in case someone moves in and out of focus. Um, but for the a for the main camera, I have it at 1.8 at all times, which is obviously a very shallow depth of field. And for the bride walking down the aisle, how do I focus on that? Um, people ask me about this a lot. Um, and the only trick that I can share with you that I do with it is I always start off focusing on the groom. So the groom stood at the top of the aisle waiting focus on him you can take your time focusing and getting your focus nailed on him <clears throat> then the bride appears at the end of the aisle and starts to walk down I keep my focus on the groom so at the minute the bride's kind of coming down and she's just like a blurry shape and that looks quite nice because you kind of see the blur of her and you are, and, you, and but I'm still focused on the groom and you, he's starting to get a little bit like emotional and then slowly 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 I take my focus back and the bride's coming down the aisle forwards and my focus is going back and I just keep going back until at some point in the middle she's going to walk into focus she's coming forward and my focus is going back and as soon as and I look I'm looking I'm using my eye and as soon as she comes into focus then and, and she's she's like halfway down the aisle at this point I then go back the other way and just try and track her um, as best I can but I'll like slowly go back until she walks into focus and then once I've got her in focus I'll come back the other way and try and follow her down for the rest of the way. So you're only having to follow her like half for half of the aisle. And if you know, if you do kind of mess it up completely, you've always got the, the B cam shot, which is at the back of the aisle. You can always use that if it's that bad. Just practice, I guess. Practice. Um, but yeah I like to shoot wide open because I like to shoot wide open for the rest of the day and I'm just used to it and if I dropped the aperture for the ceremony that would be fine to like 2.8 or something but then I'd forget to put it back down to 1.8 or back up to 1.8 afterwards and then I'd end up shooting the whole day at 2.8 by accident and then I'd be kicking myself so it's just what I'm used to but it's practice, practice, it's practice um, right, okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, um, like, loads of great questions there. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, I've got uh, my next video is coming out on Friday. Uh, Friday, yeah, Friday, um, which is that kit bag. Update, kind of a what's in my bag kind of update for going into this season. Um, so that's the next video and um, I hope you kind of make the most of this time of more inquiries because people are inquiring more at the minute with it being January. Capitalise on that, make the most of this time where people are starting to plan the wedding inquiring. Make sure you're banging out your content, make sure you're you know working on your brand and using this time wisely and if you've got weddings to shoot then uh, all the best with those. and. Uh, thanks for tuning in, thanks for commenting and watching and I will see you um, in the next video and I'll see you very soon. I think um, for next month's live stream I'll be back in February, first Wednesday of February for another monthly live uh, Q&A and I'm going to try and get Howard involved on the next one. Um, he's been away and he's back next week so I'm going to try and get him involved soon. Um, but yes, yeah, signing off. Thanks for watching. Peace out.